Hi, everybody. So in the last video, we were talking about deburring and the overall condition of the Behringer kits, which is good. Uh, in this video, we are actually <coughs> creating some of the rudder pedals and starting to hook them up into the rudder pedal holders. I don't know what they're called. The rudder, whatever. You'll see them in a second. Uh, they're pretty big, uh, and it's two-piece. So the way that it works is it's two bars that go across the entire width of the fuselage, and one is responsible for the left rudder, and one is responsible for the right. Okay, so when one moves, so if one rudder pedal moves, the other rudder pedal will put pedal will move because the inside pedals are connected. As you can see, there's the pieces there. The inside pedals are connected directly to the rudder cable. So as you push one, the other one will pull. Uh, you might be looking at, at that and thinking, well, they're not really equal, right? They're not, it's not like it's one interior tube and then the exterior tube, so they're all on the same, on the same fulcrum. They're not. So each one of those is on a different fulcrum. And by that, I mean a place where it pivots. So, how do you make them equal, right? So the idea is that it's going to form a triangle, right? These two bars are going to side, are going to form one side of a triangle, and the two individual rudder pedals are going to make another, right? The idea is that when everything is set up and you've got the master cylinders on and everything's in place, that they'll be calibrated so that the very bottom of the rudder pedals, those the white bars at the cross, the ones that are actually closest towards me in the video at the moment, uh, will be lined up perfectly, right? Uh, <clears throat> and that the rudder pedals will also, or so that the brake pedals will be calibrated so that they're all on the same plane as well, right? So there's going to be a little, right? So every one's just going to be a little adjusted a little bit differently. The idea being that, you know, if you don't need the brakes, why would you ever touch the brake pedals, right? All you need to do is touch the bottom bar. The bottom bar is the rudder. So as long as the two rudders are lined up neutral to be equal, great. Everyone loves that. Uh, and that when you put your toes up to reach for a brake pedal, that they both be in the same plane, right? Why would you want to have one that's like tilted backwards 15 degrees or one that's tilted forwards 15 degrees? You'd like them to be equal. Because in the end, the side frames of these rudder pedals don't matter. You're not pushing on those. You're pushing on the bottom and you're pushing on the brake pedal. So it doesn't really matter where the fulcrum comes from. Although technically you will feel a difference between your left and right foot. Only because one is technically rotating from a position that's farther in front of where your toe is versus uh, different. Though people say they can't tell the difference. So then it's all trivial. <clears throat> you can see one of the master cylinders there that's in the front. So in the last video I talked about how when the Behringer kit came, right, it doesn't show like how those cylinders are, you know, put together. Because those aren't just one piece. They just just show up and built like that. So the cylinder itself has the spring housing, the spring, the piston, and the lower section all as one piece. To make it long enough for it to actually be used, what you have to do is there's a uh, an extender cap that goes on to the opposite side from the spring, and then an eyelet that goes into that. Right, and then on the opposite side where the spring is, there's a hex uh, machine screw that's in place, right? So you got to take that screw out, which, yes, the spring will s spring out. Then you have to get another eyelet uh, that has the exact same threading as the screw that you just took out. You have to insert it through the cap of the spring, which holds the spring, and then you have to compress the string, a spring, sorry, back, and thread that... Uh, bolt into the piston. Now, let me tell you, that's some trick. That takes a lot of ass. I've got good grip, and I'm pretty strong, and that was that was tough. Because that piston, there's nothing really, there's no pressure holding that piston in place. So as you, it's, let's say the piston is extended when you take that bolt out, which it will be, when you start pushing on it, it immediately goes back into the master cylinder, right? Because there's no pressure holding it in place. So if you don't have the thread going in immediately, all you do is you wind up pushing it back, which means you have to put more pressure on the spring. 
yes, it is a pain. Um, <clears throat> the only th foibles about adding these, so these springs are wider than the stock van master cylinders. The stock van master cylinders don't even have springs, right? It's just, uh, just a shock. Uh, this is a shock with springs. So those springs are pretty wide. Uh, whatever they tell you to use as washer spacers on the bottom, uh, you might need an extra one. Which is fine. Don't forget, according to the FAA, you're allowed to have three washers back to back to back. After that, you need a spacer. Alright, so yep, yeah, apparently I'm done for the night. Got half of it done. Uh, the other half, I think, was drying because that uh, white epoxy paint I used on the rudder pedals is, is slow to dry. So, Oh, no, wait. I'm just putting together the other two master cylinders. There we go. In the darkness because I'm working in the dark again. <clears throat> so thank you for joining me, and we'll see you soon.